Hello and welcome to the Thursday, June 29th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. Jan today wrote up a quick survey based on Shodan data looking at what web servers are still running, SSL version 2, and well, where they are running, which actually turned out to be quite interesting. SSL version 2 was pretty much shown to be vulnerable and should no longer be used the late 90s, so 99, and since has steadily been removed even from some TLS implementations. What uh, Jan found was, first of all, the not so surprising part, it's a lot of IoT devices, the go ahead web server in particular, that's a web server that you often find sort of on embedded devices. But geographically, it was very much concentrated in Kazakhstan. First, I thought it may be somewhat politically related. Kazakhstan has had some interesting ideas, like, for example, forcing everybody to install a government-controlled certificate authority to make machine-in-the-middle attacks easier. But in this case, it appears that one particular ISP, the largest ISP in Kazakhstan, is deploying endpoint devices that use a web server that only supports SSL version 2. So these modems really are responsible for this big spike in SSL version 2 devices in Kazakhstan. And then we got more trouble around NPM packages. Darcy Clark, who used to be associated with the NPM project, uh, has published a blog post showing how the NPM packages or the manifest files uh, can be abused. The problem is that these manifest files are never really verified or compared to the content of the actual tarball. There is a hash that's being included in the manifest for a particular tarball. So that can be used by a well-behaved client to actually verify it. It's never actually being checked by the NPM registry. But just modifying the unsigned manifest file can lead to some issues. For example, an attacker who has access to overwrite a particular manifest file would be able to then add scripts that are going to be executed as part of the install process or for example alter dependencies that are listed in a manifest file which then of course could confuse security scanners that rely on these manifest files to identify any outdated dependencies being installed by a particular package. For more details see the excellent blog post that also lists a number of examples how this could possibly be exploited and what third-party products may be susceptible to this particular vulnerability. Security Joe's has a blog post about a new code injection technique that they are calling Mockingj. The goal is to inject malicious code into a trusted DLL without the use of standard Windows API functions. Most existing techniques that do things like DLL hijacking are typically using some specific Windows API functions that are closely monitored by endpoint security solutions. So what they were looking for is a technique that didn't use these API calls and as a side effect then would bypass these endpoint security solutions. What they found was the ability to inject code into DLLs that had RWX sections. RWX, read, write, execute are sections of code in a DLL that can easily be directly overwritten and executed by anybody with access to the system. So ideally suited for what they were looking for because it did not require any standard Windows API functions. They did a proof of concept of this and more details about this is in their blog post. They also found a fairly widely deployed DLL that is susceptible to this msys 2 o.dll. It's often used, as they say, to implement POSIX functionality and sort of tools ported from Unix and it's part of Visual, Visual Studio, so uh, often used by developers. In the end, of course, this is really just another sort of step in the 
cat and mouse game to try to find a better mouse trap. So we'll see what endpoint protection vendors will come up with in response. Well, and that's it for today. Just a little preview regarding next week's schedule. There's, of course, the holiday on July 4th. I'll also be traveling. So there will probably be no podcast on Monday, Tuesday, as well as Wednesday with the first podcast then next week being released for Thursday. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.